What's up, YouTube? This is Sunday Drive coming to you live from the Keys Motorsports Garage. What's up, YouTube? Cliff here from the Sunday Drive. In a previous video, we showed you guys how to install a light bar, in this case, in the front of my 2014 Silverado. And since then, we've had numerous requests, how do you hook it up to your high beams? Well, the wait is finally over. Today, we're gonna show you how to hook that light bar up to your high beams. Yeah! <laughs> Now the process that we're going to be showing you guys in this video should apply to any vehicle. We're going to be installing it with a three-way switch so that the light bar can operate independently or with the high beams. We're going to be using an add -a fuse. In this case, I need a three-prong add -a fuse, and this is going to go to the same fuse that powers my high beams. Some heat shrink, wire, flux, a soldering iron, and of course, some solder. And we'll have links to all of these parts in the description of the video. Here's the circuit diagram of how we're gonna hook up the light bar to the high beams of my vehicle. Now we're gonna show you how to install all of these components. However, whenever working with electrical connections on your vehicle, it's a good idea to start with a diagram so you have a clear understanding of what you're gonna do. Ask me how I know. So right here is our light bar and here are our high beams. Now most light bar kits that you purchase will come with a harness and that harness usually includes a relay. Now I installed the light bar and relay in a previous video. If you need to know how to install either of those, watch the video that's linked in the description below. The way the relay works is there's a coil on one side between terminals 85 and 86. And when that coil is energized, it closes the switch inside of the relay, completing the circuit, and in this case, turns on the light bar. Now we want the light bar to be able to turn on independently and also in conjunction with the high beams. The way that we are doing that is with a three-way switch depicted right here. We're going to call this position one, position two, and position three. Now when the three-way switch is in the center or number two position, the light bar is not going to turn on. There's no uh, power going down to the coils in the relay to enable it. However, when we switch to position number one, the relay is directly connected to the battery, energizing this coil and completing this circuit, turning on the light bar. Alternatively, if we switch this into position three, we now have a connection to the high beams. Uh, and the way we're achieving that is through a fuse tap in my fuse box, which we're gonna show you how to install. Now, just connecting to this fuse is not going to turn on your light bar. You need to have power. Now, the high beams are powered when you activate your high beams through your normal high beam switch. In my truck, it happens to be on the, the column. And when I push the stick forward, my high beams turn on. So when that switch is closed, completing the circuit for your high beams, because we are tapped into this fuse, that is going to provide power. Uh, again, when you're in position three, down to your coils, energizing them and closing the switch inside the relay and turning on your light bar at the same time as your high beams. Now you can leave the switch in position number three and the light bar will only turn on when your high beams are activated by whatever switch you use to turn on your high beams. Something else that you want to consider installing is a flywheel diode. This is installed between terminals 85 and 86 or in parallel with the coils inside the relay. And the reason for a flywheel di diode is that when this is energized and completes the circuit, when the relay is switched off or switched to a different position, the voltage in here needs to dissipate. The flywheel diode allows that voltage to dissipate quickly and safely without damaging the relay or any of the electrical components in your vehicle. Without this, flywheel diode, the relay can become damaged over time. Now some relays will actually come with a flywheel diode uh, installed inside the relay as part of the circuitry. However, in this case, my relay does not have a flywheel diode. So I'm gonna be adding one uh, to the circuitry. However, I don't have that diode with me today while we're shooting this video. So we're gonna be adding that at a later time, but I am gonna show you where it does install. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the, the power from the battery. That goes to the switch and the light bar, just to be safe while we're working on everything. Push that out of the way and I'm going to push the cap back down so it can't come in contact with it. The first thing that you're going to want to do is locate the fuse box on your vehicle that has the fuse for your high beams. On my Silverado, again a 2014 Silverado, it's right here on the driver's side. To access this, you're going to pop these two tabs out and lift up on this. This will pull out. Then usually in the lid of your fuse box will be a description of all the fuses it contains. 
In our case, the high beams are fuse 58 right here. Looking down at the fuse box, that is this 10 amp fuse. And again, it's a three pin fuse, so you can't use a normal tap. Now, if you watched our light bar installation video, you know that we installed our light bar switch right there. Um, so we're gonna be mounting our new three-way switch right here. And I'm not actually gonna mount the switch. I'm just gonna have it sit up in here and have some extra wire uh, spooled up in this area so that I can mount it somewhere that I want at a later time. Um, but we're just gonna run it up to the same location. In order to do that, we need to remove this side panel right here. So just grab it at the bottom and pull out. Just got some big metal clips, so. And uh, actually, if you need an additional fuse, they have some three-prong fuses right here you could use. We're also gonna pull this out so that we can get access to the hole that's in the back. And this just pops right off, very easy. All right, so we're just gonna leave that loose for now. Again, if you watched our previous video, you know that we fed the wire through the side grommet and into the engine bay right there. With power disconnected from our switch, we're gonna go ahead and cut it so that we can replace it with our new three-way switch. And if you remember from our last video, this wire barely reached this area, so there's not a lot of room left over to work with. Here we go. To get this out of the way, I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the three electrical connections on the back. So we just disconnected these three connections. And you can see this is the wire I just cut. Now because it's so short, we're gonna have to put some extensions uh, onto it. So I'm gonna pull it back down underneath so that we have some room to solder extensions onto it. And then we're gonna connect our new three-way switch to it. Save myself a little bit of work. I've connected our new red wire that's gonna feed into the engine bay to this black wire that I'm gonna pull back now. All right, now we can use that line to pull the extensions back up and save our trouble, self the trouble of fishing it. <laughs> Here we have three yellow shrink pads. <laughs> so this is the original wire that connected to our light bar switch. There is a black or ground a constant 12 volts, which is this white one coming off here. It was yellow in there. And then there was a red one coming off. That was our switch that activated the relay or closed the relay completing the circuit. The black wire is no longer necessary. That was only necessary for this switch because there was the LED indicators. So it needed a ground for those. We do not have any LEDs on our new switch. So you do not need to have this ground connection. And now we're gonna run these back up into this area. And I put lots of extra slack on it so that in the future, if I want to move where this switch is located, I have plenty of wire to do that. We got these two wires that, these are the extensions right here. And then I'm gonna pull this red wire back through that's gonna go to the fuse box. And now we just have to get it up and out the grommet in the side of my door jam right here and then into the engine bay. Pop out that grommet in the door using a pry tool like this. So you can see there's that grommet I just popped out and you can see the wire that we've already run through there. So I have the red wire routed through that grommet now as well. And we're just gonna feed it through this area right here into the engine bay. All right, so I fed a fishing line, this metal fish line through that hole that goes into the engine bay and just pulled my wire through. And again, if you watched our light bar video, it's the exact same process. In our case, the seal around this fuse box is very tight, and that's good. You don't want water getting in here, but it makes a tight seal, and you risk damaging the wire if you try to run it right at the side. So you either have to drill a hole in the lid, but that'll make it inconvenient trying to ever remove this lid in the future. So what we're going to do is actually feed a wire through one of these grommets underneath, and then drill a hole in an empty spot where there's nothing underneath of this, 
and feed a wire up inside of the fuse box. So in order to remove this top layer, at least on modern GM vehicles, you're gonna rock these two arms together and there are tabs on either side you have to release. So pull these tabs out and then this will rock up. Pull the tab out here and the tab out on this side and that will rock up towards the center. And you wanna bring this all the way to the middle. All right, like that. And then you're just gonna work this up. And then you're gonna have to push these back out a little bit to get it up all the way. And there you go. And as you see, we have an opening right here where there's no fuses, uh, no receptacles for any fuses. So we're gonna be able to drill a hole right in this area on the fuse box and feed our wire up through that. and take your wire and feed it up through that hole. So I'm just feeding the wire right through this opening right here. And as you'll see, when we put this down, it's not pinching the wire at all. It's not tight. Um, so it's a nice natural opening to go through. If I can just get this reinstalled properly. So as you can see, I can still pull this through loosely and we're not pinching the wire and we have a nice clean install up into the fuse box area. Again, this is the fuse right here, number 58 on my Silverado that we're gonna be tapping into for the high beams. You wanna install that in the bottom one right here and just put it in the same orientation as the, the uh, direction it came out. Very tight fit for some reason. There it goes and then put the new fuse. We're just gonna use a five amp fuse. Again, this is just to power the switch and to trigger the relay. So you don't need, there won't be a lot of amps running through this. So a five amp fuse is sufficient. And it's a good idea just to have it smaller than the other fuse. This is really tight. <clears throat> All right, so that's the direction you wanna install it. And then when you put that in here, you're gonna face it out in this way so that the fuse you took out is in the same orientation as when it was originally in there. And I'm gonna be pushing this five amp in a little bit better. Gonna cut the end off of this add a fuse because we're going to solder the connections together. And just strip this off. Strong connection, now we're gonna solder that. It's always a good idea to put some flux on your wires ahead of time so that they're prepped properly. Uh, for this stage, you need to grow a third hand or have your photographer hold the wire for you. All right, so there it is installed. Put a little electrical tape on top just to be safe and we pulled the excess back through and into the cabin. So we can put the cover back on here. You have a nice clean install, no holes in the top of your box. I fed these three wires through this back hole right here. This is a hole that's pre-existing. If you have a brake controller from the factory, you're not gonna have this opening right here. So you'll need to feed this in another location, but I do have it, so I'm gonna use it. Reconnect your three connections at the back. All right, and you can go ahead and reinstall this piece. Once I am done connecting this to the harness, I'm gonna feed the excess back through the hole. But I wanna have some extra in case I wanna mount this button at a different location in the future. Here's our three-way. So as I said, in the middle is gonna be off entirely for the light bar. If you have it switched in one direction, it'll turn just the light bar on. And if you switch it the other way, your light bar will turn on when you operate your high beams. I have three of these crimp connectors that I'm going to be installing into. And then they'll just slide onto the three terminals. 
So I'm just going to cut these so they're all the same length. Make sure we have a good connection in there. I'm going to bend this wire in half just to make it a little bit thicker. And then we're going to crimp down on that. Here are our three connections on the three-way switch. Uh, in the center here we have our relay connection. The white over here, it's constant power and on the far right is our fuse that we connected for the high beams. Uh, we put some black tape on the center one just to identify it, differentiate it from the other red wire here. Now the way this works is if you flip your switch up into that position, it is feeding the 12 volts from your battery through the center wire here to the relay and that's causing the relay to close. If you flip it to the middle position, the relay is gonna remain open since there's no power going to it to cause it to close. And if we flip it to the other side, when you turn on your high beams, this is gonna send power down this line from that fuse that we tapped to the relay, closing the circuit and turning on your high beams. The location we're gonna install the diode is between the ground connections. You can see all the ground is shared right here and the switch on the relay, which is this small red wire. Just make sure you install the diode in the proper orientation. At this point, you can go ahead and reconnect your constant 12 volts to your battery for your light bar. That's it guys, that's how you wire up a light bar to your high beam. So I've been wanting to know how to do this for a while because there was no good references. So hopefully this reference will help you guys out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. All the parts and components used in this video will be linked in the description as well as my light bar. Uh, if you guys need to know how to install that, you can watch our other video, which will be linked in the description as well. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you here next time. Let's do it one more time. Ooh.